interesting point about Indiana. I think they're in a unique situation right now, being so highly ranked. It's been a while since they've been in this spot, and everybody is, is just analyzing, micro-analyzing, whatever happens. Obviously, a tough game against Wisconsin, but there's going to be some of those. You've got to have a short memory, and, and I think Indiana and Tom Green will have these guys ready to go. As for Northwestern, they've won six of the last eight meetings, each of the last three in Evanston. So they feel good about themselves on their home pitch. Taking on this IU squad. And here we go. Northwestern controlling the top. Very important, Gus, for Northwestern to start fast on the offensive end. They did that. They jumped all over Illinois in that last game. They never looked back. Inside, big jump hook, rims off. And here come the Hoosiers, Yogi Ferrell. Great crowd on hand. A lot of crimson and cream in the stands making the trip from Bloomington. Hey, what? It almost sounded like a home game for Indiana when they came out of the locker room. Here's a pick and roll. Farrell trying to split and does the kick. Watford a three. Count. That's big. Christian Watford's a guy so many people, I think, have just wanted him to break out and continue to escalate his game. Started almost every game of his career for Indiana. Very talented player. Watford, only five points in their loss to Wisconsin. Three of eight from the field. Now, Swatshire, they want more from him, the Louisville transfer. When he scores the ball, they usually play well. Gosh, he just doesn't always look to shoot. You see him there. Had a chance at a three. Didn't pull the trigger. Might have been a force. But he's not always aggressive. Good pass here. Hearn right, on the back door from Swatshire. And Northwestern on the board. This Northwestern team's become better, actually, at the dribble handoffs, I think, than the backdoor cuts, even though that's what everybody knows them for. Talking to Tom Green, he said, I'm worried about their three-point shooting and their backdoor cuts. Threes and layups are a concern. Cody Zeller's shot contested. As Sobo brings the ball over the midcourt line, guarded by the freshman, Yogi Ferrell. You see here, Zeller can stay in the lane when Ola gets it out top. Now he's just going to stay planted in there and defend the rim, which will help on those backdoor cuts you were just talking about. Now Hearn, 16-footer. Now that's the spot. That's a nice play there by Bill Carmody and his crew because if Olaf's going to set that screen, Zeller will have to come up not to defend Olaf, but defend Hearn. Zeller inside. Can't get it to go, but Oladipo there for the tip. And Reggie Hearn is such an interesting story. Here's a kid that walked on... Coach Carmody told me that one reason he loved him is because he owned his own lawnmower business. He was cutting <laughs> lawns, and he said, I want a guy that works that hard on my team. Earned a scholarship. He had 20 against Illinois the other night. No surprise a guy that's willing to work that hard is going to have success on the court as well. Watford driving and gets it to fall. Christian Watford aggressive to start. He hits a three, and now a nice strong layup. Well, you said it there, aggressive. That's the big thing. A lot like Swapshire, too. Sometimes Christian Watford just goes silent. You don't hear from him for a while, and he's too talented, Gus, I think, to be that quiet. Earned, guarded by Watford. Sobolewski, really crafty point guard. Now Swapshire straight away. And Wofford snatches it down. Boy, that was a really nice play, though. Great design. A little confusion on Indiana's part, and they left Swapshire wide open. Better on jump shot. Zeller, no. Swapshire with a rebound. Fisher's letting the play early. Sobolewski, and he's bumped and fouled. So injury is a major concern for Coach Carmody's Wildcats. Well, that Crawford one really hurts. Cobb was out the whole season, but Crawford, who is playing, uh, he's out with the torn labrum, and they're, they're still trying to adjust, but it's forced Reggie Hearn to take up a little bit more of the offense. Abrahamson's in there now. Demps as well. And we'll take a look at Crawford, but seems like this has been something Northwestern's had for a while, that injury bug, Gus. They always seem to get somebody hurt and have to adjust. Ike Turner checks in for Ola for Northwestern. He wears number 10. Here's that Princeton offense. These gentlemen usually very patient. They work the shot clock. 20-footer. Wapshire off the mark. Zeller clears it. That's his second good look. Those are shots he's got to knock down here. And the game clock in the arena. Shot clock and game clock, I think. Having some issues. It'll be sidelined. 
Out of bounds for Indiana. Seven to four, IU. I was okay with a little extra basketball. We just keep the turn the <laughs> clock off. Let's just play for a while. And so they'll set it at 16-24. Indiana, their next couple of games will be in Bloomington against Penn State and Michigan State. That should be a terrific battle when the Spartans come to town. Teacher versus mentor. Tom Izzo and Coach Green will go at it. Here's Watford strip and foul. So Christian Watford will go to the lines and shoot two. It's a nice drive there. Sobolewski almost got over in time. Foul trouble is something that's bothered Sobolewski. They really need him on the court. As much as we've talked about Hearn and Swapshire, Sobolewski is really the heart and soul of this Northwestern club. They bring so much fire, so much energy. They went to Baylor, Gus. They almost got a taunting technical foul. At Baylor, he's talking to the crowd. You wouldn't think it from a young sophomore like that. Not the biggest guy out on the court, but he's got all heart, all desire. So IU this season, very balanced scoring. Five players averaging double figures. And I imagine if you're Coach Green, that's what you want. You want the ball to move and guys to get touched. Yeah, there's no doubt. And they're going to play up and down. They'll try to speed up this game with a little full court pressure. More possessions, going to be more points for Indiana. Zeller with the steal and foul. Indiana, after the made free throw, picking up full court. Looks like it caught Northwestern off guard. Well, this is a good idea by Tom Crean. Try and extend this game. Try and force some pressure. We talked about Crawford being out, one of their ball handlers. Anytime you let Northwestern guys get into the half court, run their offensive sets, that's when you're letting them play their game. So for Indiana, I'm sure that won't be the last time we see them pick up full court. So sophomore All-American Cody Zeller will go to the free throw line. Looks, Gus, I don't know if he's got some blood here. It's the Big Ten game, three, a little, little over three minutes in. We've got some blood already. That's right. Well, we know it's a Big Ten game now, Mike. <laughs> now it's official. I don't see it still. I don't know if he's got it. Uh, took a shot to the mouth. Well, this kid has changed the fortunes of this program. Cody Zeller in only two years. Look at what he's done. He ranks first in a number of categories. Field goals, free throws made, free throws attempted. Yeah, you really like to see that. Free throws made right there. Any big guy who's willing to get that ball, absorb the contact, get to the line, that's what you like to see. So often now, Gus, we see these big guys, they want to step out, they want to just shoot the threes, but Zeller gets out in transition, and he'll get the ball in the low post with a high block. His name, Big Ten Co-Player of the Week with Ohio State's Deshaun Thomas after he averaged 17 points and five rebounds along with three blocks. He had 15 assists during the week as the Hoosiers beat Penn State and Minnesota. Second free throw goes down. And we see Indiana's going to pick up again full court. It's going to be a long day if Northwestern can't handle this pressure. So Belusky. Abrahamson turn around jump shot and air ball. And Watford there and he's fouled. Christian Watford off to a great start. And here's the question, folks. Do you fear the beer? In sports, it has become an icon bigger than some of the stars that wear it. More when we come back to Evanston. I paint people from his career last year versus Kentucky. And that takes us to this afternoon's All-State Mayhem Index, which focuses on his season stats. Well, seven points, three rebounds early in this game, Gus. And he's come out really with the aggressiveness. That was the word you used, and I agree. Sometimes Watford, as we said, will blend into the background, but not so far in this game. 10-4 IU. Here in the first half, Watford, the inbounder, along with Yogi Ferrell, Oladipo, Jordy Holes and Big Z. A little confusion here. Indiana trying to get this play set up. Surprising out of the timeout. Holes looking for a shot. 
Nice defense by Hearn, closing on him. Eight to shoot. Farrell, he's got space. Backs it up, four to shoot. Driving to the bucket left. And Yogi putting in work early. Well, it's an excellent move, but the mistake there was by Turner. When he gets switched off on the guard, especially Farrell, you got to make a beat you with a three first. You can't let him get around. But Yogi Farrell, so strong. You bet. Freshman. You bet. That's one of the reasons. That strength, Gus, one of the reasons he's been able to step in and play so well in his freshman year. So Indiana, 15-2 record, 3-1 and one in the conference. A lone loss coming to Bo Ryan's Badgers of Wisconsin. 12 to shoot for Swapshire. Indiana well-schooled on this Princeton offense so far. Swapshire one-on-one, -on -one, spins in the lane, the kick. Sobolewski. And Zeller with a rebound. Here comes Oladipo with speed. Wadford, hesitation, drives to the rack. Tried to jam it down and draws a foul. Gus, that's 0 for 3 now for Northwestern. On the offensive end, they've got to be able to make some threes. It's just such a big part of their game that if you don't respect them because they're not knocking those down, then you can really clamp up on those backdoor cuts. So Wadford going to the line. I, I was in Bloomington recently, and I said, Christian, what's up with this beard? And you know how kids are. He said, well, you know, it's my style. <laughs> but I think he took it from some other guys. How about this, folks? Fear the beard. Brian Wilson. I think he got it all started. No, actually, Bill Jackson. They're going back a little bit there. Drew Gooden still rocking that beard. That's the best right there. I think so. That is a thick beard. But then there's James Harden. That's pretty good, too. Moses. That's pretty good, too. I don't, I don't think I could... Well, first, I couldn't grow a beard if I wanted to, but beyond that, I don't know, Gus. Could you do the beard and no, I sweat do it. like that? I don't it think itches. So. It itches. Yep. Swapshire over the midcourt line. Indiana 13 4. Northwestern. Dangerous territory right now. They're flat to start this game. Not shooting the ball well. well that's it, just right there, Gus. Got to be able to knock down. They've had some good looks, just haven't hit them. They're 2 of 8 from the field to start. And a foul on the baseline. Indiana on a 10-0 run. And Will Sheehy call for the foul. Sheehy off the bench. Jeremy Hollowell checks in for the Hoosiers. Very talented freshman, 6'8". From Lawrence Central. In Indianapolis. Pretty good ball rotation right now, but Northwestern's got to get something going towards the hoop. Zabalewski. Hoosiers making Northwestern work for everything. Yep. Hearn. 16. Got it. That is cold-blooded right there. That's a real good defensive possession, and with a tough shot by Hearn. Hearn with a rebound now. And that's why I get back to because the senior leadership of a guy like Hearn, and we talked about his work ethic being out there. At the end of a shot clock, someone's got to be able to make the shots for Northwestern. It's going to be Hearn. Alex Marcaciulio has checked in for the Wildcats. He wears number four. He's got a nice jump shot. If he can get a look. Hola. A handoff, Hearn, a three. That was flat and out of bounds. Here's a look at Hearn. This is on that last play. Nice job by Sobolewski. They do those dribble handoffs so well. I talked with Tim Buckley and I IU staff before the game. I said, are you more worried about the backdoor cuts or those handoffs? And he said, you know, I think this particular Northwestern team's a little bit better at the dribble handoffs. Usually takes a while, Gus, for teams to, to play with each other, to get used to the backdoor cuts. Right now, those dribble handoffs can kill you. Remy Abel in, running the point for Indiana. Here's Zeller, quick turn, and laid up and in. I think that's Hollowell who lays it in. And Indiana takes a 15-6 lead. And they give that bucket to Zeller. Now, either way, just the aggressiveness. This Indiana team, very good on the glass. And they've got the size advantage. I think, Gus, they can get on the offensive glass and get some second-chance points. IU, four of eight from the field to start. Now Hearn, backing his way in. Ola. 
And he's got to knock that down. That's the only way he's going to be able to pull Zeller up. Remy Abel a three. Sobolewski the other way. Pushing it hard. Sobo to the basket. And a blocking foul. He'll go to the line. So Abel called for the foul. 11.51 to play in the first half. Indiana up 56. Back to Evanston right after this. The number two team in the nation here in Evanston. Now, after the game, it's a special presentation of the journey. Big Ten Basketball 2013 as we follow the teams you love on and off the court. Justice Conference play heats up. Right after the game, presented by Chase Freedom. Gus Johnson along with Mike Kelly. Mike, when you look at the conference and what's going on right now, I mean, so many quality teams. You see what Michigan State able to do yesterday against Ohio State. You saw what Ohio State did at home against Michigan, Wisconsin beating Indiana in Bloomington. I mean, this is just going to be fun to shoot. I think it's going to take some time still, Gus, for it to shake out and find out exactly who's for real and who's not. But certainly what we found out, I mean, Iowa's the one team right now. Those guys can play. I mean, they, they've got a team. Indiana went there and won by four. I think Michigan State only won by three. They did knock off Wisconsin last night. That's a team that no one's talking about, Gus, but I really like what they can do. 15 to 7. Now holes, along with Sheehy, Zeller on the baseline, driving inside Sheehy. Great play. That's a nice pass. See, that's where Zeller gets so much attention. That double team comes, and before it even gets there, he's got the ball out of his hands. Great look. Zeller, such an unselfish player. Unassuming star. Great teammate, according to his coach. The only knock on him is that he'd like him to be a little more selfish at times. <laughs> Isn't that something when you got to tell players? Shoot the ball a little bit more. Ola gets his own rebound. And a new shot clock for Northwestern. So the Wildcats getting good looks. Just unable to knock down shots. They're 3 of 11 from the field well, to that's, start. That's just it. Haven't made a three-pointer yet. Over four. Ola gathered himself and banks it home. Seven freshmen on this Northwestern roster. See Zeller down low. Good switch back to Ola. On to Zeller. Hearn had him for a second. Good matchup. Ola with great size at seven feet. Taking on the seven-footer and Cody Zeller. Ola doesn't move quite as well, though. So they're going to try to get to Here you go. They're going to run that ball screen just to get Ola out of the way. Oles. Now Sheehy at three. Sails out of bounds. Here's a look at that last bucket for Northwestern as they get to the offensive glass. And Ola's got the size, as you mentioned. Good look here by Swapshire to find him. And Ola just puts it right back in. All right, the big fellow will get a chance to take a blow. He's got his hands full. Mike Turner back on the floor. Coach Carmody normally only plays about seven guys. He's running out of guys. <laughs> All the injuries they've had this year. Sobolewski pick and roll. Hesitation. Tried to find Turner. Swap Shire to the bucket. Halfway down. Turner with a rebound and a timeout call. Possession arrow favors Indiana. I wonder if Swap Shire made that play more difficult than it had to be. He had a look from the elbow, about a 15-footer. Instead, he drove in. And IU's got so much athleticism because they can challenge those shots. Slapshire 0 for 3 to start this game. When he played at Louisville for Rick Pitino, he was a complimentary player. But according to Coach Carmody, he wants him to take charge and be more offensively minded. Yeah, that's the great thing about Coach Carmody. He's always pushing his players. He wants he wants Sobolewski rather to take more shots. Same with Slapshire. Gives these guys a lot of freedom on the offensive end. 17 to 9. IU. Western trying to find their momentum now. They've been better last couple of possessions. So they will start this offense further out, but as the possession moves on, they move closer and closer to the rim. And a foul. Reggie Farrell hanging on to Sobolewski. There's one thing we haven't had a ton of. I think that's just the eighth foul in this game, four on each side. And Yogi picks up his second foul. 
He'll check out, and Jordan holds back in. So Belusky the inbound. Like it was deflected off of an IU player and they reversed the call. Well, I think they got it right. Let's take a look here. Yeah, yeah, Wofford. That, yep, the hits Wofford never gets Turner. Here's the thing now, Gus. You watch Northwestern this half court offense. Turner's in for Ola, but Indiana can play the same way. You see Perea down low, and he, of course, isn't as tall as Zeller, but he can dunk on the 12 foot rim, so he can certainly defend the basket. He's just staying right down low. Look at him right in the middle of the lane there. He's not going anywhere. Back door, Sobolewski taken away by Oladipo. Here comes Victor. Halls hadn't taken a shot. Finally does. Oladipo with the offensive rebound, and he traveled. 8.35 to play in the first half. Indiana, 6 of 14 from the field. It's 43%. Northwestern, 4 of 14. 29% shooting. But you can't say that the Wildcats haven't had great opportunities at the basket. There's no doubt about it, Gus. Good shots inside, some good looks from three. That's such a big part of their game. Haven't knocked them down. And now this full court pressure. We'll see if IU can be successful. 0 of 4 is Northwestern from three. Ahern showing his versatility. He can bring the ball up the floor. setting a screen and he wipes out Victor Oladipo well and there's the problem because he got Zeller who's not even guarding Turner so he's in the lane and now Turner picks up a foul you watch here just a little aggressive and it's his legs Gus you see his legs are spread that's what you can't do when you go to set that pick and Turner with three fouls already Olaf prepares to check back in for Northwestern Zeller Jump up. Tipped up and in by Sheehy, and they will not count the basket. Sheehy interfering. Watch Sheehy get up here. Zeller, first off, nobody able to challenge him with his size and athleticism. Nice little baby hook. And Sheehy just gets it off the rim a little too soon. Sheehy's such a great athlete. He really attack the basket. Talk to him. Last week, he said, I think I'm going to go to law school and be a lawyer. That's what I want to do when I finish playing ball. Not bad. Student athletes, that's what's great about it. You watch the college game, and you hear these stories of the kids that are in it for the school as well as, well as the sport. Ola taken away by Halls to see he. Watford on the wing. Ola Depot, power dribble, block. Zeller there, and the stick back. That's tough. IU hasn't got out in transition a ton. Northwestern is... In fact, as much as we've talked about Northwestern needing to hit some shots, they've done a tremendous job holding Indiana just 19 points 12 minutes into this game. Demps. Her curling down the lane. Lost it on the way up. Here comes Watford. Three on two. Sheehy. Euro step. Deals it to Oladipo and a whistle. And an offensive foul against Will Sheehy. Well, Indiana trying to get something going in transition. Up by 10 right now. And Gus, when they can score out in the full court, that's when they're at their best. You watch Zeller here just running the rim off of the miss. She cleans everything up. And IU up by 10. To play in the first half against Northwestern. And today's MFS investment management inside the numbers. Well, you take a look, Gus, at Indiana on the half court defensively. Your nice job by Zeller just getting around on the bottom side here. And then this is a 50-50 ball. 
that Hulls comes up with. And now you watch him in the break, and this is what we talked about. In transition, who don't you see in there? You don't see Zeller, but he's coming. Believe me, everybody knows he's coming. He's going to follow this play and off the miss. That great athleticism, and more than anything, just the desire, the effort to get down the floor. He has three red jerseys ahead of him, and the fourth guy comes and gets the bucket. And talking about their defense, I talked to Coach Green, and you know when you talk to a basketball coach, they're basically talking physics to you. He said against Wisconsin, they were helping too much. What does that mean? Well, when you watched Indiana play, I, I think Wisconsin's a team where if they had their their druthers, what they'd like to do is one-on-one -on -one stay in front, not necessarily overcommit, because if you do that, Wisconsin's going to take advantage. Now you bring two defenders to one player, and someone's left open, and that was the problem. Now Hearn. Now Pachulia, 10 to shoot. Demps. Hard drive, fade away. Everything very difficult for Northwestern offensively. Indiana really making them work. Now Oladipo. To Zeller. Double teamed and fouled. Yeah, he's fouled about three times. One, one thing, so often those big seven-footers, guess they just get beat up on. It's like they're so big, you got to really foul them to make it count. A guy like Zeller, as good as he's been, I'm sure he's taking quite a few fouls this year. Marco Giulio called for the foul. New shot clock for the Hoosiers. Watford got his man in the air. Oh. Depot pounding it. Holes, quick release. Zeller there for the tackle. Well, here's the look. Bill Carmody went small, Gus. You see Northwestern, no Ola, no Turner in the game. And that might work on the offensive end because you could pull Zeller away from the hoop, but the problem's going to be that defensive glass. They got to find a way to keep him off. IU. Eight of 19 from the field. Zeller with seven points. Watford has eight. And a steal by Oladipo. Watford. And he buries it. Well, turnovers are going to turn into points with this Indiana club. Got to take care of the rock. And listen to this Indiana crowd. Cody Zeller and Christian Watford taking over this game. Now you see Swapsar matched up on him. He's given up a couple inches, probably some pounds as well. And Zeller just pushes him off down low, uses both hands to clear some space, and then Watford trailing this play. It's a good find by Oladipo, and Watford buries it. Now get involved in the Twitter conversation around today's game. Go to btn.com slash connect. You can find our hashtags periodically at the right of the score strip. Now, what's a hashtag? <laughs> well, I tell you what, when you said that before the game, what's a hashtag? I thought, oh, man, we got a whole Twitter discussion we could have. We should save that one for halftime, oh, though, I think. <laughs> hashtag Gus Johnson. We should start one right now. 24-9. Wildcats trying to get something started. 4 of 16 from the field. 0 for 4 from the three-point line. They've only been to the free throw line twice, one of two. And they've turned it over five times. You see Zeller, now he's got to come out and defend on Swapshire. He can't be under the hoop like he was before. This should open up some backdoor cuts in theory, but Indiana doing a good job. Swapshire sails out. Zeller takes it away from Sobolewski. Hollowell in the open court. Almost lost it. Now Jordan Holes driving to the basket, left hand high and in. Well, that's a nice finish. That's the one part about Hull's game. Everybody, you know, the scouting report is you can't let him beat you from three. So the more he's able to score, putting the ball on the floor and getting inside, it's going to make his life easier. And here's a look at that last play. Sobolewski just gets beat. This is a little one-on-one. -on -one. Swapshire is there, but doesn't give enough help defense. Indiana on a 9-0 run. 
And Gus, I've always said basketball games, it's kind of like dancing, right? Somebody's got to have the lead. Someone's got to be in control and dictate the pace. And right now, Indiana is taking that first step. They've got Northwestern on their heels, and you can just see it in the eyes as you watch out there. I, I asked Tom Green, are you worried about this one? He was at his command center in the shower in the <laughs> visitor's locker room. He said, nope, not worried. We're ready. Not worried at all. We're going to play well today. He's done a nice job with his club. Brought in some good people. I mean, the wins over the years for Tom Green, obviously that first year really taken over, but con continual steady improvement. Ola, back door, Dimps, reverse layup, and with English. It's a good pass from Ola, tough to do. Just threaded the needle there to find him. Yogi Ferrell back in, he's got two fouls. Abel and Farrell in the backcourt, Hollowell, bunch of young guys on the floor, Oladipo, almost threw it away. 26 to 11, Indiana with the commanding lead, we're in one of the great cities in America, folks. God. Lost, someone to step up, and a guy like Watford's the perfect one to do it. You see, he's got half, or he's got as many points, I should say, as Northwestern. When you see a player as talented as Watford, how do you explain his inconsistency. You know, I think if, if you could figure it out, I'm, I'm sure Tom Crean and his staff would have done it by now. And I think some of it goes to what you said about Zeller. Nice guy, good person, uh, not necessarily wanting to take bad shots. And if you're not willing to take some bad shots, you're going to have some stretches, five, ten minutes, where you don't shoot the ball. Now Zeller posting up, draws a double team. Farrell, deep in the corner, finds Oladipo. Five to shoot. They swing it. Hollowell to the bucket. Batted around. Oladipo offensive rebound. Can't stick it back in. Loose ball. Hollowell hits the deck to Farrell. Indiana controlling. Farrell baseline. Wapshire three, finally. That's a big bucket. That is the bucket that Northwestern needed just to do something, soften up that defense of Indiana. You see, with Ola in the game, Zeller staying back, Swapshire was able to wiggle free. Swapshire with 12 points and six rebounds in their win against Illinois. See, I think this is a good spot for Ola to do just what he did. You, you just let Cody Zeller get that ball. Push him off the block. But I think Cody Zeller's a little more dangerous, Gus, in the full court, and certainly when he faces up to the basket, not with his back to the basket. Demps, Sobolewski, Hearn, Ola, and Swapshire. Swapshire in the corner. Driving. And bumped and fouled. We go back to Northwestern's last bucket. As you see, Ola, that's the thing. As long as Zeller isn't guarding him, Ola's going to be able to run this offense comfortably from that high post. So he'll just go up there, catch the ball, very good pass there. And he found Swapshire wide open. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we've got the State Farm halftime report. Stay tuned. Update you on what's going on in the conference and around college basketball. A lot of fun yesterday watching college basketball. Syracuse knocking off number one, Louisville on the road. Great game. I think the best game might have been last, that Butler-Gonzaga game. That ending was outstanding. Who would have thought when Gonzaga had that ball side out of bounds, that Butler would have found a way to get that steal. Demps, long three. And Abel with the rebound. Here comes IU. To look at that Indiana offense without Zeller on the floor. You see, Hulls, that's a good look for him. Put it on the floor. We had already talked about it. Being able to hit those twos, be efficient, not just outside the arc. Who's number one this week? Duke. 
I'd say Duke. again. Again. There's a, there's a couple teams. I'll tell you what, Indiana's not far away. They keep playing well. I know they lost. And they're going to have to win some more games, but this is a very talented team. Meanwhile, Hearn coming off the screen hard, attacking the rim. And you see Ola. Now, if they're not going to defend Ola out there, what it did is it allowed for Perea to stay in the lane, but he's not helping out on the ball screen. So if, if you're a guard and you're coming off that screen, guys, you've got to take advantage. There's nobody hedging. There's nobody even playing flat. You've got to beat that, that pick and roll situation. Hearn, their leading scorer at 14 a game. 28-17. Remy Abel. Top of the key. And Jordan Hall is starting to heat up. Well, he's tough. When he's on his game, it, it's, it's a beauty to watch because it, there's just no way you can leave him open or it's almost automatic. He was the first player on the floor for Indiana today. He struggled from the field against Wisconsin. I asked him, I said, Jordy, you never miss shots. What happens? He says it happens every now and then. <laughs> he can remember them. They, they happen so infrequently. Yeah, exactly. So Belusky takes the three. Contested. He got fouled. Sheehy slashing to the basket and draws contact. Watch this last three here. Sobolewski gets picked off on a screen that he just doesn't see coming. You watch him there. Sheehy comes up. And when that happens, Gus, you're bringing two defenders to that area. So Hearn, if there's communication there, Hearn's got to be the one that steps out and pushes off on Holzer. Pushes up, doesn't let him get that three off. 26.2 to go. Don't forget, stay tuned for analysis, scores, and more on the State Farm Halftime Report. Will Sheehy missing the free throw. Zeller kept it alive. Uh, Northwestern will get it again. But again, I go back to Gus. Excuse me. Nor Northwestern's defense been fine for the most part. I mean, 31 points, the way Indiana likes to play, is not out of line here. It's a matter of Northwestern needing to score some points on their end. Will Sheehy was 0 for 4 against Wisconsin. He's got a bucket in this game. One of three from the field. Remember, Cody Zeller had the 23 and 10 game against the Badgers. Indiana just didn't shoot the ball well. Different story. Three seconds. Ola takes a three. And that's the end of the first half. Christian Watford, Cody Zeller. And these are our auto owners insurance. Game leaders, keys to the lead. Well, you, you almost had to figure Indiana was going to be able to score inside. The only way Northwestern is going to get consistent points in the paint is going to be on those backdoor cuts. But the way they've defended Northwestern has taken all of those away. But nonetheless, Gus, you're right. A lot of those pointed in Indiana's favor. Very good first 20 minutes for IU. So Northwestern, 30% shooting in the first half. 7 of 23. See if they can get off to a better start in the second half. That's Cody Zeller over the back. It's one thing Zeller does extremely well. He's got great anticipation when the ball comes inside and he's guarding. Yep, he's very good at uh, seeing the court. I mean, so many times people talk about him. Good high basketball IQ. And it's no doubt with his size, athleticism, and then understanding of how to play the game, that's why he's successful. Turner starts the second half. Turner's Lights gonna, off Zeller. Excuse me, Turner's got to stay on the floor. He's got the foul trouble, as you mentioned. But they need a big body. Someone else, they can't lose him matching up against Zeller. Swapshire. And Sobolewski in the corner finds a wide open herd. Zeller with a rebound to Oladipo. He's got Yogi Ferrell on his hip. Hands it off. Zeller. And a foul. Good hard foul by Reggie Hurd. Yeah, this is how Cody Zeller runs the floor here. Nice job. In fact, Oladipo, you can see right about here, he knew he was going to Zeller. He tried to do the handoff, and he took Sobolewski out of the play. Hearn comes from behind and picks up the foul. But Gus, a pretty low possession first half. And, and nonetheless, Indiana has 31 points. I would say that's a fair total. I don't think Northwestern had a whole lot of changes on the defensive end. They're fine. They've just got to find a way to score.
We got a big guy like Zeller. They're shooting 71% from the line and getting on transition. He's so multifaceted. And he gets to some feel that Cody, if he comes out of college, could be the number one player taken in the nation in the NBA draft. Well, you can see what they would like. We got a big guy there. Got the size, got the athleticism. You know, as far as Northwestern and what they need to do, it's one thing to say make some shots, but you look at their three-point totals, one of ten now after that last miss. A lot of them have again been good looks. There haven't been a ton of bad shots that they've taken in the half-court set. So Belusky gathers himself and carries a three. First three-point field goal made for Indiana. For Northwestern, excuse me, against Indiana. They're now one of ten. 33 to 20. Yogi Farrell. Hard drive to the bucket. Well, he's so good. That would, looked like Swapshire, I think, got matched up on him on a switch. And Gus, if you're a big guy, I mean, I think you just have to back off. You've got to dare make him shoot a three because you let him get to the rim and it's an automatic two. Four points for Farrell. And a foul. Chris Robert caught holding. Gus, let's go back to that last shot by Sobolewski for Northwestern here. You watch them play. Zeller's going to be down low. Now, he's, that's who he's guarding. He's got Turner here, but he's not going to come out and defend on the ball screen. So when this happens, sobolewski has got to be able to knock that down. Otherwise, you're just playing right into Indiana's hands. Somehow, you've got to pull Zeller away from the hoop. And by setting a ball screen, you're going to do that. And then you got to make him pay. 35-20, IU inside. And Hearn on a backdoor cut on the inbounds play. Plus the foul. Or the connection from the two leaders on this team. Two vocal leaders. You got Sobolewski here taking the ball inbounds. Great vision here. Nice play by Hearn. You blocked off a little bit there, but nonetheless, absorbing that contact, getting to the line. Chance for six points and two possessions here for Northwestern. Well, she he picks up his third foul. Hearn adds a free throw. Northwestern trying to claw their way back into this game. Excuse the pun. <laughs> I like puns. They're good with me. <laughs> hold. Zeller. Couldn't hold on and a foul will head the other way. Momentum starting to swing a bit now. And isn't it something too? Sobolewski's always in the middle of it. Whenever Northwestern's playing well and they get on a run, it's Sobolewski just Tangling up. I mean, he's going up there. It's a pretty good job by Zeller, actually. He was almost under the hoop. And he comes out to almost get the rebound. And you see it was an easy foul. Kind of a silly foul, too. Easy one for the referees to call. Second foul on Cody Zeller. A two-pointer right here. And Northwestern cuts it to 10. They trailed by as many as 17. Swapshire. Up top. That's a brick by Turner, but a foul. Swapshire and Farrell tangled up. This is the first time since we walked in two hours before tip that it's felt like a Northwestern home crowd. The foul called on Christian Watford. See if the team can feed off of this and what Indiana can do to try to get that momentum back. I've never seen more people take pictures of a shoot around an hour before the game than Indiana fans were here just, just watching their guys take jump shots. They were all shooting pictures. So Belusky. And the ball turned over. Abrahamson slips out of his hands. Well, he's a guy who's stepped up. He's getting a lot more minutes with Crawford out. Lumpkin's still not playing. Abrahamson's been putting that starting lineup. He's got to be productive. Zeller working hard inside with Turner. Look at those two. Holes off the bounce. Nice. 
Tell you what, he's about ready to write all those scouting reports over. He's had a lot of good looks from inside the arc. Put the ball on the floor and get into the rim. 37 to 23. Sobolewski. And Zeller there. Jordan Holes with nine points. He's four of seven from the field. One of three from the three-point line. Splits the defense. And draws a foul. But he's really driving the ball to the basket today. Yeah, back-to-back -back drives here from Holes. You see it there. Nice job absorbing the or I should say, avoiding the contact down low. He's an all-around player, too. I mean, he, he's shown it now. He can not only hit the threes, but he can put it on the ground. Wisconsin did a nice job rubbing him off. Any screen he came off, it just didn't let him get the ball in a position to shoot those threes. Hollowell coming in, along with Demps for Northwestern. See that often from Holtz. Back-to-back misses. Saw it against Minnesota. Zeller bailed him out, though. Keeping the ball alive on two missed free throws as the Hoosiers preserve their win against the Golden Golden. Dimps. Got it. 37-26. IU. Northwestern continuing to fight to get back into this game. Zeller. And Zeller will go to the line. Think your family is competitive? Well, stick around and we will show you one of the most competitive families in sports with a lot on the line today. Check out my new treadmill. Western, Baltimore, New England, <laughs> Atlanta, San Francisco. The Cream family, the Harbaugh family, maybe one of the most competitive families you'll ever meet in sports. That's someday right there. I even talked to Tom Green one time and he told me I'll never play pick up basketball with Jim Harbaugh again. Oh, yeah, so physical? I could lose my teeth. <laughs> and he's got a great smile. So he could play in the Big Ten is what you're saying. <laughs> no doubt about it. As Zeller adds a free throws, 39 to 26. Watch the screen. He probably paces seven miles <laughs> he's per what, game. What's the saying? You can make a cup of coffee nervous? <laughs> That's Tom Crean right there. You always knew that Tom Green was going to be a great head coach. Here's Hearn. Yeah, you, had, you had a good start. You met him back when he was an assistant at Michigan State, right? That's right. And knew at that point, just you could see it. You could see it. Energetic, charismatic, had a great mentor, and Coach Izzo. Five to shoot, Hearn somehow squeezes that one in. Well, that's what he's got to do. I mean, there's going to be possessions where that Northwestern offense is going to break down. They won't create an easy look off of a pass. And Hearn's probably the best guy on this squad at creating off the dribble, something for himself. Wildcats need stops, though. Every time Indiana needs a bucket, they usually go inside to Zeller. Boy, good no pass by Oladipo. Looked like he wanted to pull the trigger down low, but it wasn't there. Inside Zeller. And a bucket. And some contact. Nice finish there by Zeller. It's a really good defensive possession for Northwestern. There wasn't anything easy. Even Zeller had to deal with two black jerseys. That's the one thing. You're talking with people around Indiana. Going back to that Wisconsin game. I mean, sometimes there was one shot there by Ryan Evans where he shoots falling away. And it goes down. And sometimes it's just one of those days where nothing not you do is going to matter. Cody Zeller with 13 points and 10 rebounds. Another double-double. Sobolewski, high arcing jump shot. Swatshire there and a foul. Oladipo call for the foul. Here's a look at that last Indiana basket. Nice job here by just diving to the rim. See Swatshire, three black jerseys come over. 
Able to finish and making his head coach happy for a second. Then right back to being nervous, right? <laughs> but it's a very simple concept. Get it to the big guy. Yeah. That's, that's, tell you, you talk to a big guy, they, they sound just like you, too. It's not hard, Mike. That's what they used to tell me. Just throw me the ball down by the rim. Turner, not a threat to shoot the basketball. Ola preparing to come in for Northwestern. Sobolewski. Inside, somehow pivots. And Zeller clears it to Sheehy. And a foul. Boy, Indiana switches sides quick, don't they? Nice job there. Sobolewski almost scoring over the seven-footer. But then off of the miss, you just got to get back. You got to send bodies. You can't go after the offensive glass too hard. Indiana, the fifth-rated offense in the country. Tenth best defense. They lead the nation in scoring at 85.4 points per game. Free throws made. Second in free throws attempted. Now, BTN goes where you want, when you want it. With BTN to go, presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Watch live basketball and BTN original programming on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. BTN to go is available at no extra charge to subscribers who receive BTN through their cable, satellite, or participating video providers. To learn more, visit btntogo.com. Also available in the App Store and on Google Play. Sheehy gives Indiana a 43 to 28 lead. Nice bounce back performance by Sheehy after going scoreless against Wisconsin. Sheehy with four points. Yeah, I like it when Ola right there. He can knock down the 15 footer, but the ball screen is what he's got to do a little more of. And Dibbs comes up with the rebound. New shot clock for Northwestern. Ola. Back door, Sobolewski, and five. <laughs> Sobolewski's at such a disadvantage, Gus. When he gets caught inside, last time it was against Zeller, this time against Perea. And he has got to go to some acrobatic shots just to get it off. But that's what you like about Sobolewski. He never backs down. He's not going to change and stop going inside just because there's a big guy in there. I really love his attitude, his hustle, and his desire. Sobolewski, 10 points and 6 assists against Illinois. He's 5th in the Big Ten in assists, averaging close to 5 per game. Had a big 18-point game against Penn State in their win. And 5 dimes. 43 to 29. Side, Yogi Ferrell tries to thread the needle and throws it out of bounds. Almost like he got playing a little too fast there. You know, he's, he's obviously quick, and he came off. He wanted to make something happen, but he just forced it a bit. Now Abel comes in for Ferrell. Also Elston coming in. I think it's Elston that's getting the real nice applause as well as he comes into the game. There's a good look at him. His first 10 games with... After recovering from knee surgery, he's a great guy coming off the bench. He gives you so much energy and passion on the floor. And we'll see how Tom Crean continues to integrate some of these guys that missed time early. Gets them some minutes. He certainly will need them down the stretch as we get into the heart of conference yep. play. Sobolewski, and he's fouled. I'll tell you what, the team that I think is the most dangerous in the conference is Ohio State. They've got right? so much talent. They do. They do. They've had some funny games, though. That's the one thing you wonder about them. Back to Evanston right after this. Indiana, under 12 minutes to play. 
tonight examine college basketball's national picture and see how the events of the week impact the Big Ten. Big Ten Basketball and Beyond presented by Marvel Song. Tonight at 8.30 Eastern on BTN. Wooden Award, mid-season candidates. How about Trey Burke? What a spectacular young player. Sean Thomas starting to come on, average of 21 a game. Brandon Paul, close to 20 as well. And then there's Zeller. I'll tell you what, you got to pick one of those guys to start a team? That's a tough call. If you had to pick one, who would you pick? I think I'd take Burke. I think just, just because college basketball so often can be dominated from the point guard position. They've got the ball in their hands. There are ways you can try and take a big man out of the game. And Burke has been so special this year. I'm taking Big Z. Are you? Get the ball to the seven-footer. <laughs> That's a pretty good weapon. There's probably not a bad choice on that list, that's for sure. Elston. And a reach and foul on Marco Tullio. Marco Tullio's been a little quiet. A really nice game at, at Illinois. He hasn't scored yet. Three, one. Bill Carmody using this more as a change of pace defense. Didn't see it at all at Illinois, and this might be the first time we'll get a good look at it here in this game. Inside Watford driving, and he's fouled from behind. Looks like Ola gets him. That's what you want from Christian Watford. Constant pressure on yep. the defense. So versatile for a big man. Well, you're right about that. He's got that size. He can put it on the ground. He can get inside, certainly finish at the rim. And then, above all else, pick up fouls on the other team. And with Turner in foul trouble, Ola picking up another foul here. You got to be a little concerned if you're Bill Carmody. Wofford listed as 6'9". Elston checks out. Zeller back in. Oladipo back in as well as Abel takes his seat. Receives a mini lecture from Coach Cream. Well, what do you think Coach Green is saying to you? I'll tell you what. Those are those conversations. Sometimes as a player, <laughs> you got to find a way to sit down on the bench and just forget about it. That looked like a pretty calm one, though. Not sure exactly what was going on there, but a nice teaching moment. Always good you take a player out of the game, let them calm down a little bit. They can hear you better than when you're yelling to them from when they're on the court. So Belusky with a three. Looks like Oladipo took a shot there. Watch this last play and see where Oladipo gets picked off. Just a little rub. You see he gets stuck going, trying to go be two. There's a handoff. Two players set a screen and he took something that looks like to his right eye. So watch again. This is a better look at it. to see much. So Oladipo will be checked out. Meantime, Yogi Ferro back on the floor. Northwestern in a zone. They stay in striking distance now, just down 13 points. It's 1-3-1, one one. we'll see. It's tricked a lot of other opponents. You haven't seen it all game, might try to deal with it. How far Indiana is out of the half court. Ball stolen. Swap shot ahead of the field. Zone <laughs> causing Indiana some frustration. <laughs> it wasn't talking over. 45-34. IU with the lead. But Northwestern continuing to fight. Swapshire. This is the age of knowing what you're made of. Why let erectile dysfunction get in your way? Talk one three one and just Farrell uncommonly telegraphed that pass. Swapshire easily stepped in, goes the other way for two. 45 to 34. Can you turn my mic up, guys? Now 
Now Cody Zeller. Along with Holes, Yogi Ferrell, Wushihi, and Christian Wadford. Back to man to man for Northwestern here. So after full timeout, probably preparing for the 1 3 1, Bill Carmody goes man. Sheehy turns the corner, finds Seller, and he's fouled. It's real easy for IU. Let's see who they're going to get here. If they get Hearn, I think they got Hearn instead of Swapshire. It was interesting because Swapshire comes over, actually did a real nice job of challenging at the rim. The foul is not on him, though. They had Hearn from behind. So Hearn picks up his second, Seller. Very good free throw shooter. Zeller, six of seven from the free throw line. 14 points. And he also has 11 rebounds. 47 to 34. Now Indiana picking up full court. And they'll back out of it. It's mostly just pressure right there, just on the inbounds. After they get the ball inbounds, Indiana's falling back. Here's her, guarded by Sheehy to the basket. And foul. Reggie Hearn playing so hard this season. He's got a pick up for Crawford being out. That's a, good, that's a good finish. Excuse me, Gus. That was the first time we've seen, for the most part, anytime there's been drives, Zeller's been able to get over, cut it off. You see Crawford there. You're talking about. Taking over for Crawford, losing one of the ball handlers, another scoring option off the bench. Crawford with a torn labrum, had surgery on December 20th. And he said they, and Coach Carmody told me that it was a nagging injury. He, was, he had some shoulder problems last year. And this season, he just woke up one day and couldn't lift his arm and ended up having to have surgery. And he most likely will receive a medical red shirt. So they'll get Crawford back. They'll get Jershon Cobb back next year. He's out in violation of team rules. We'll see if next year, it seems like every year we say, you know, this year, this year is certainly still going on, but Northwestern's going to have to get on a run if they want to make the NCAA tournament. Cable to the basket. Holes. Loose ball, Marco Trulio there. Northwestern with the chance to get it inside 10. And they'll look for a good shot here. Reggie Hearn has 16 points. Sobolewski. Has hit two threes. Marco Trulio. Wapshire driving. Ola thought about it. Hearn does it. Well, Ola's got to take that shot. Everybody in here. Ola's wide open at 10 feet out. You got to. You got to pull the trigger. And Marco Julio committing the foul. Go back to the last play here. This is IU on offense, of course. Zeller getting tangled up, takes a shot to the face from Hearn. You can just sense it, because things starting to get a little bit louder in here. Northwestern fans making their presence felt, as long with the IU fans. Jordan Hall's missed three straight free throws. 47 to 36. See if Ola sets some ball screens here. If he comes out, they should be able to get a guard open off a of pick and roll. Ola with the handoff, swap Shire three. Just as good as a pick and roll. Little dribble handoff there. Use all out of screen as man, and Swapshire makes him pay. Now the Northwestern fans back in it. Remy Abel. Swapshire knocks down a big jump shot. Northwestern on a 10 2 run. How about this? This is just classic Northwestern trying to get back in this game. Dribble handoff pulls it within eight.
47 to 39, Indiana, but Northwestern mounting a comeback on a 10-2 run over the last two minutes and 50 seconds. And no surprise, Gus. They're hitting their outside shots, made their last two three-point attempts, and we, I mean it's just huge for this Northwestern team. The way they want to play, they're going to take a lot of threes, but they've got to be able to knock them down. And now on the defensive end, can they continue to defend and keep Zeller away from the basket? Here's Oladipo along with Abel, Watford, Zeller, and Jordy Holmes. Zeller slips to the basket. Oh, oh and he had a block from behind. Yeah. Somebody got a piece. I think that was Swapshire. You're right. Great vision. Help side by Swapshire. Sobolewski on the handoff, almost taken away by Abel. Northwestern is trailed by as many as 17. Marco Julio, back door, Hurd, inside, Ola! And the lead is six. This zone has caused some problems for Indiana. It's made them think, Gus. They've had to start thinking on the offensive end. Lot for three. Oladipo, offensive rebound, holds. Abel tied up. And a foul. Wow, that looked like a jump ball from here. Let's take a look at that last play. Great slip screen here by Zeller. And it's Swapshire, the recovery. And here's on the other end. How about the vision? You go over to double team Hearn. Not sure Zeller needed to do that, but he leaves Ola wide open. Remy Abel at the lock. And a rebound to her. Well, that shot never had a chance, and this is what it's like right now for Indiana. Trying to close out games on the road. They've got the target on their back, all the preseason hype. This Northwestern crowd is getting really loud. And a foul. Hearn just plowed over. Looks like Watford trying to get over the screen. Yeah, he just ran through it. He'll be a little smarter about it. These are the type of fouls that towards the end of the game, you end up putting people on line because of fouls like this that you want to avoid. Reggie Hearn will go to the free throw line. He's a 70% free throw shooter on the season. Well, in Watford's defense, Gus, the one thing you have to do, when Northwestern's going to run those dribble handoffs, you've got to be physical. You've got to fight through, but he went after the man with the basketball instead of pushing his own man off the three-point line, which is the right way to play it. Aaron shooting two, 47 to 41. Sheehy back in, replaces Abel. Five-point game, though. And now Northwestern extending the zone even more. Absolutely here. Zeller, double team. And one. Oh. No, they call offense. Wow. Look, looked like a good call, too. They're going to count the basket. Ed Hightower confers. See Sobolewski. It's actually one of the few times so often you see them count that shot, and I don't always agree that the ball was out of his hands, but it did look like it was Zeller on the way down. His contact with Sobolewski was after that ball got out of his hand. Now the question might be for an Indiana fan, did he give Zeller enough chance to come down? Now if you're moving, Sobolewski has a right to a spot, but you can't undercut someone. I don't think that's what Sobolewski did. I think this is the right call all around here. I think Hightower got it. Sobolewski, a 65% free throw shooter, will get the first. As we take a look at the foul trouble, Zeller with three, Watford with three, and Sheehy with four. Second free throw. Got to convert. Northwestern's got to convert from the free throw line. Hall's double team. Sheehy. Hall 
Oladipo. Well, you see, there's just nothing going on right now offensively. All out of sync is Indiana. Baseline, Zeller. Indiana looks rattled. Six to shoot. You know, with the kick, they're going to reset it to 15. That happens outside of 15 seconds on the shot clock. It'll go all the way up. But you're right, though. Just this 1-3-1, one, one, Bill Carmody waited on it. We didn't see it till midway through the second half, but it has worked. Oladipo, four to shoot. Holes has to hurry, two to shoot. The runner. And tapped up that end by guess who? Big Z. <laughs> it's hard to teach that. Not a whole lot going for about 45 seconds of offense for Indiana. And a missed shot becomes an easy two with a guy like Zeller inside. Hearn kicks it out. Sobolewski, the leader. And a rebound to Sheehy. Oladipo with the push. And Indiana will hold on. Here's a look at that last bucket. Just before double zeroes on the shot clock, Hulls gets it off, and then Zeller. I mean, Ola's got the size to match up with Zeller, but he doesn't have the athleticism to go up and get that ball above the rim, and that's where the quick athletic ability of Zeller takes over. Can't beat the one three one out here. You've got to get it to the wing and then low block. That short corner area. Three pointer for Oladipo. That's a big shot there. Victor Oladipo shot that with confidence. Yep, absolutely. He shot the ball so much better this year. But that was why the ball got inside and then kicked out, where he gets the open look. Her pulls up. Oh. That's a tough shot now. Northwestern's got to build on that. 54-45. Got to play through this zone. Cannot play off top exclusively. Sheehy off the dribble. Big time shots by Oladipo and Will Sheehy on the last couple of trips down. What a weapon Will Sheehy is. Bring him off the bench, the guy with that kind of talent. Defense, defense, defense. Indiana keeping Northwestern on the end of the jab. Both teams exchanging haymakers right now. A close game here in Evanston. Oladipo with the huge three when Indiana needed an easy bucket. Earned the other side. Cold-blooded, and now Sheehy. Nice little pump fake. What a game we've got going on. Hey. On the season, Indiana averaging... Almost 90 points a game, 85.4. Who's in Wisconsin, though? Only 56. Yeah, it's easier to slow a game down than it is to speed it up. That's for sure, because the Northwestern can take their time. In fact, Indiana plays into that as well as they play defense. You don't give up easy looks early. And the one way you can speed up a game is by giving the other team easy looks. But Tom Crane and his staff certainly are not going to let their guys do that. Reggie Hearn. Big game for Hearn. Closing in on 20 points. Foul behind the three-point line. It's a big foul here. Now Hearn step into the line. Chance to knock down all three. I'll be curious to see if Bill Carmody's going to go with that 1-3-1 one, one, or man-to-man -man for a possession. 1-3-1 one, one has worked so well. So Hearn gets all three. They go 1-3-1. One, Oladipo circling. 
like this. This looks like the Globetrotters there. <laughs> Curly Neal. Holding the basketball. A lot of dribbling. Got to beat this zone with the pass. Baseline. Zeller. And he throws it away. Now the stop is half of it for Northwestern. How can they get a good look here? Ola staying down low with Zeller. Reggie Hearn has been their go-to man. Rocachulio. Swapshire's got to take it. And pure. Wow. 56-51. Indiana needs a big one. They go to Seller and he's fouled. Boy, we said that Jared Swapshar had to have a big game. And all the all the wins for Northwestern, his numbers are way up. You see him here. Nice job of just spacing. That's off a little dribble handoff from Ola. Indiana pushed up two defenders, able to find the open man, and that's a big shot by Swapshar. So Zeller at the free throw line. He's seven of eight today. 19 points, 13 rebounds. And he gets the first. Later today, it's a doubleheader of women's hoops. First, Iowa takes on Purdue, and then Minnesota hosts Nebraska. Coverage starts at 4 Eastern on BTN. Guys, how about the job Swapshire has done, especially when Ola and Turner were on the bench for a while? You've got a guy undersized like Jared Swapshire having a battle, someone like Perea or Zeller. And he has just stuck his nose in there. Now he comes up with a big three as well. 2.15 to go in the second half. Indiana has led by as many as 17, but Northwestern continued to fight a 1-3-1 zone. Watshire gets to the bucket, has caused IU some problems. And with two minutes left, we've got a 58-53 game. You just cannot get beat back door. Letting Ola pass, and if you're going to sag off from that far, you've got to take that bounce pass away. Oladipo. And a timeout called by IU. Tom Green didn't like what he saw, and of course, with minute 44, he want to make every possession count. You go back to that last look. Watch here, Zeller, if he's going to back up, he's got to be in a position to knock that, to knock that ball away. There's just no way that pass should get through. Now, Watford, Watford's trying to take away both the dribble handoff and the back door. That's why he's in a tough spot, and you need your big guy to pick you up. So 58-53, and Mike, in the first half, Totally different story for Northwestern. This team that's come out in the second half has played a terrific half of basketball. You know, the biggest difference, I think, was they hit shots in the first half. They just couldn't make a three, only one for nine, missed their first one in the second half. But that changes a lot of things when you have to defend Northwestern and they're hitting their threes. Defensively, they've been fine the entire game. And this 1-3-1 is the other story in the second half. They switched up into the 1-3-1, and it slowed down Indiana. They're really thinking, trying to figure out a good way to attack it. 17 on the shot clock for the Hoosiers. Zeller's trying to clear some space down low. Jordan Holes, the runner, and good. Boy, how about the shots? All the depot, then Sheehy, now Holes. All these guys sharing the wealth, hitting big shots down the stretch. Sobolewski for three. And Sheehy with the rebound. Well, you wonder when Bill Carmody's going to go to foul us here. Not a lot of time left. You want to extend this game. Hulls has struggled from the line. Sheehy, baseline pull up. Air ball. Oh, the deep go there. Jump ball is the call. And the possession arrow favors IU. Boy, I think you got a foul here, though. Down seven. Here's that last, a look at that last play. Big rebound by Oladipo. He brings it down just to corral it. But possession in favor of Indiana. We'll see what Bill Carmody does. I just, if Indiana's going to take another 20 seconds off of this game, 
of course, even if they make a shot, then at the end of 20 seconds, you're really behind the eight ball. I think you got to file and try and extend it. Northwestern, here are the key plays to allow them to get back into this game. Well, we talked about it. Got to hit some threes, and there's the dribble handoff. That, I believe, was the first steal out of that 1 3 1. It was the first look. Farrell threw it away. Swapshire made him pay, and now you've seen the backdoor cuts that started to come into the picture for Northwestern. They just got clicking offensively. Defensively, holding Indiana to 60 points. We showed it before. They have slowed this game down, but they had to find a way to hit some shots. Overdick coming up after the game. The journey. Great episode. Watch that episode yesterday, actually. Debuted. It's a new one about point guards in the Big Ten. It was great. That's a great show. I tell you what, a little behind the scenes look at everything that goes on to being a coach and a player in this conference. Pretty neat. And the point guards in this league are special. That's for sure. That's for sure. Watford foul. There's your foul. Swapshire called for the foul, and our Motel 6 sixth man of the game is this gentleman, Woshihi. Six points, three rebounds off the bench. Now the one thing that's troublesome if you're Northwestern is how do you get a quick look? You know they can run good sets, but it gets a little bit tougher when you want to get a shot in the first 10, 15 seconds here. We'll see what they do when they come the other way. Because that they can't take too long in the half court. Big game though for Christian Wofford. He started off extremely well in the first half. Aggressive, hit a three, then drove to the basket, got a layup. Demps and Wofford fouls him. Boy, that ball had a chance to go in just as a loose ball. That shot up right at the rim. Dempsey's guy who stepped in, another guy with Crawford's absence. You see, he's got a little shake and bake in his game. He's able to get to the line here. Now, Northwestern can try and score with the clock stopped. So, two shots for Trey Demps. Five points today. Sixty-one, fifty-four. And he gets it there. So what's the strategy for Coach Carmody now? You know, I think you've got time to try and get a steal here. I don't think you have to go for the foul right away. I mean, certainly you could. That's not a problem. But you've got a chance with 51 seconds. See if you get a quick steal. There's holes. Looks like Subolowski was trying to foul him. Mark Mark Holes Julio finally fouled. Yes, Marco Julio. Jordan Holes, though, has had his adventures at the free throw line he's missed three in a row you're right and at some point you wonder when does it get in a, a shooter's head you've seen that happen before obviously he's got a sweet stroke holes oh for three from the free throw line I tell you what always feels good as a player too. Double bonus. You're at that line, you know, okay, no matter what, I'm gonna get another look. Calms you down a little bit. You hate to miss those front end of one-on-ones. And he gets them both. Jordan Holes. Gives Indiana a 63 to 55 lead. Token pressure here by the Hoosiers. Turn. It looked like Hearn had a chance. To, couldn't get the shot off. Timps driving. And a timeout called by IU. That's a good timeout. To the main bucket by Demps gets inside. A little struggle. Got two timeouts left. Good timeout by Elodipo. Here's a look at Demps. Tell you what, he's got some shake and bake. 
able to get to the rim. No help side defense there. Everybody defending the three for Indiana, not wanting to give it up the three. Demps takes it all the way to the rim. But it's been another great afternoon for Cody Zeller. Yeah, as usual, Cody Zeller, you watch him work. Just got so many different ways that he can score. And everybody talks about in transition, but he's done a pretty nice job on the low block. His teammates finding him. And I love this stuff here. The 50-50 balls that he was able to come up with. Just staying aggressive, setting the tone for his team on the road here. Got an afternoon game. You got to come out strong. And Zeller was that guy. Nice job here finishing the play on the rebound. Cody Zeller, 21 points, 13 rebounds. 6 of 11 from the field, 9 of 10 from the free throw line. He's done a little bit of everything, and he is our amazing performer. Brought to you by Quicken Loans. His 10th career double-double. See how Northwestern plays this one here. Can't let a lot of time go off the clock. Ball's working hard to get free and does, and we'll go to the line again. Oh, that's the smart play. Bill Carmody goes small. He's got that small lineup in there with Ola out, Turner out, Abrahamson out. They need to make sure they can match up. Jordan Holes, 13 points this afternoon, 5 of 10 from the field. Didn't rely on his three-point shot. He's only attempted three, one of three today. Now after the game, it's a special presentation of the Journey Big Ten Basketball 2013 as we follow the teams you love on and off the floor just as conference play heats up. Right after the game, presented by Chase Freedom. Well, big free throws by Hulls there. Keep this an eight-point eight game. Hearn. Looked like he traveled, threw it away, and deflected by Oladipo. Very awkward fall for Reggie Hearn. Got a lot of contact. Chance for a foul by Old Depot instead. They're just going to say Northwestern's ball out of bounds. And the Wildcats will take a timeout <laughs> with 27.7 to it's go. It's about the time you start to think coach has got too many timeouts, right? <laughs> He's got to use them. Yeah, he got to use them. I don't like to leave them on the floor. Well, obviously a big play. Got to draw something up. You'd like to get a three, but at this point it's going to take three possessions at least to get back in this game. You can get something at the rim. So often you see guys get an easy look quick. You'll take that if you can get it. So when the Hoosiers finish here, they'll go back home to take on Penn State and Michigan State. That Michigan State IU game should be a great one. Wow, watch. absolutely. And then they're at Purdue. Meanwhile, for Northwestern, Minnesota on Wednesday, then they're at Nebraska and at Michigan. Funny thing about Northwestern is how good they've been on the road. Their record on the road, percentage-wise, much better than it is at home. Sobolewski will throw it in bounds. Demps, step back three. Swapshire with the rebound. Demps again. Oladipo. And he's fouled with 15 seconds to go. So the story here in Evanston, Indiana started strong. Northwestern struggled with their shot in the first half, but they came on in the second half, and the 1-3-1 zone confusing the Hoosiers for a moment. Well, this is what life is like for Indiana this year. They're going to go on the road. They're going to get everybody's best effort. This is the loudest I've seen this building all season long for Northwestern. Of course, a lot of red in here, too. But they've got to get used to that, taking the best effort from everybody every time they go out. And I thought they did a nice job. Things got a little wacky there with the 1-3-1. One, but still, you got to hit some big shots. It was Hulls, Oladipo, Sheehy, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back possessions. Hit big, big buckets here for Indiana. Three players in double figures for the Hoosiers, led by Zeller with 21. Holes has 15, and Watford 14. Victor Oladipo, here's a great stat for you. Six points, six rebounds, five assists. How about that? That's what he does. Didn't force anything today offensively. Swap Shire three. 
Long rebound, tracked down by Demps. Six seconds remaining, Demps to the basket. And like Coach Carmody is saying, just let's play. I think Coach Carmody had actually talked to the officials, wanted to get a timeout after a made bucket, but given how much time came off, he's turning down his own timeout, says, let's just finish this game up. Pretty good effort here by Northwestern. They're going to come up a little short, but they played their hearts out. 67 to 59, the final score as Indiana holds on and defeats Northwestern. The Hoosiers now 4-1 and one in the Big Ten Conference, 16-2 overall. Northwestern falls to 11-8, 2-4.